Welcome to the HR Empowerment Podcast, where we will uncover strategies and new insights from HR professionals who discuss up-to-date regulations, best practices, and the most pressing topics like diversity and equity, leadership, dealing with difficult situations, and much more that affect your bottom line and business. Thanks for joining us. Hey everybody, Wendy Sellers here, the HR lady. I'm here today with a special guest, Michelle Griffin. Hey, Michelle. Hi, thank you for having me back again. And we have JC up in the frozen tundra of New York as well. <laughs> Thanks for rubbing it in, Wendy. Sorry, folks. Yeah, as you okay. all know, you've, you've heard <laughs> from me before. I'm I'm from Florida, so if it gets below eighty, we we grab sweaters down here. And Michelle, my co-host, is also in Florida, so she understands what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh yeah, I definitely do not like the cold. Although I did just vacation in Europe, so I I went on purpose to somewhere cold, but I I don't recommend it. Good to visit, <laughs> maybe not to stay. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, when you're visiting, you don't have to sho shovel the snow. Now, right hmm. you you wait for the streets to be cleared and then you go out <laughs> now listen hey you started talking about it a little bit and um i think this is something that is you know pretty close to to your heart which yeah. is generational differences um generational needs and motivations how do we help our listeners understand that humans are different and yes we shouldn't really be focusing on age, but at the same time, we we need to be aware that people just have different needs based on their generations. Yeah, generations, um, and they use they really are kind of broken up in like a twenty ish year gap on purpose, and then there's defining generational moments that make the interesting of research very similar in demeanor. Um, kind of worldwide. So interestingly enough, the generations that we see in the United States are very similar in other countries as well. Um, and so the millennial generation has been clocked to be 1982 to 2000. And in many research areas are moved, had moved that back to um, 1998 or 95 because they wanted people to be old enough to remember 9-11, which is our defining moment as millennials. And now we've had quite a few other defining moments such as the recession and now the COVID lockdown, which is gonna treat Gen Z very differently um, than it's going, uh, that's gonna really be their defining generational, uh, you know, kind of moment of how they're gonna be uh, bringing and bringing things into the, the new workforce. So it, it also stems back to values that we talked about. So each generation has their own values. They have their own work ethic culture and that is cha has changed and will continue to change. So uh, one of the things that one of my good friends and mentor and also is on my dissertation committee, Dr. Kent Wessinger, and he wrote a book, Bridges Over Ladders, based on um, extensive, extensive research. He has one of the largest research of uh, evaluating boomers, Gen X and millennials. And I actually don't know how many uh, he has now as far as like uh, data points that he has collected, but it is quite a few hundred thousand people worldwide. Wow. Um, so one of the retention issues that he found is that the average boomer held a job for 19.1 years. Gen Xers held an average job for 9.2 years and millennials on average only stay for 16 months. Wow. And when you look at why they why they will start to leave, so obviously if they're only going to stay for 16 months, they're going to start looking to leave at the 12 month mark. And by the time they find a new job, if not just walk off the job, um, is going to be because a very specific trait that they're looking for is voice, and so they're looking to be heard. They want uh, they don't want someone to say, "Well, you have to put your, you know, do the time in. You got to build it up. You don't know anything. You're, you know, right out of college or you know the older millennials are." Now now, you know, in early 40s and 30s, but it's like, you know, if they're now against people that are in their 50s and 60s and have been in jobs for 30, 40 years, they're still saying, you know, do you really know what you're talking about? You know, mm. do you, you know, have you become an expert in your field? I still have 20, 30 years over you. And so they will leave if you don't make them, a, you know, an integral part of the company. And they will be dedicated if you do, but if you don't, then, you know, they will leave. And we're starting to see now that 
the next generation, Gen Zers, they don't know the skills of confrontation. They don't know how to have difficult conversations. They don't know how to ask for things that they want. And so far with Gen Zers, they just leave. Um, so we don't know. We don't have research. Obviously, they're only a few years into the workforce of, you know, the people that were born, let's say, you know, 95 and older, um, you know, they're now in their 20s, but they're literally just quitting because without notice, with or without notice, most of the time without notice. Um, and it doesn't matter if they've been on the job for two days or a few months, because if they're, they would rather just leave than, than approach anyone about a problem that they're having or difficulties that they're having because they don't know how to have those conversations. They weren't taught that everything has been very digital for them. That's a really good point. I, I think I think what you just brought up was uh, is connected to our first episode of the internal marketing, right? You know, if if you if people employees, uh, regardless of the age, but definitely you know the the younger uh, millennials, and then as you were saying the the Z's if they don't know who to go to for help or that they can go to somebody for help, like you just said, they just leave. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we're, we're bringing all this out up to everybody is the intern internal marketing is, is super, super important, important, not only to the engagement, the productivity and the employee experience, but to the retention, you know, other or, uh, generations, and correct me if I'm wrong, but many other generations will do what I call quit and stay, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where it sounds like the youngest generation is like, no, I'm just quitting. Bye. <laughs> yeah, like that was the idea of um, when they realize they can't, that's the, there's the quiet quitting movement that's kind of yeah. happening now. And it's because, you know, it's like many generations have been doing that where they're like, well, we're just going to give the bare minimum. That's been right. known forever. But, you know, they realized that they can't just literally quit because now they don't have an income. <laughs> so quiet quitting is just doing the bare minimum and still collecting a paycheck rather than, you know, actually caring about what they do and giving, giving it their all. Cause that was their original intent. They were hired with you know bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and wanted to give their all and when they couldn't and they can't just walk away and quit because they need the paycheck they're just going to quiet quit until they can um, right. until they and can be um, valued and heard and and in a place that they feel that they can you know grow and if you and if you're a manager that's listening today whether you're hr or not um if you were actually meeting with your employees on a regular basis you would be able to know, you'd be able to, to judge their employee experience, their engagement, and you would already know that they've quite quit, right? <laughs> Versus you're ignoring them because you're busy, maybe not intentionally ignoring them. And then you find out later, oh, this person wasn't really doing their job or fully doing their job. JC, I, I see you. I feel yeah, like you have something to say here. <laughs> it's, it's extremely intriguing when we think about it. You know, when when people from different generations work together, it's, it, we all know this, right? Uh, the chance of conflict is always going to be there. The different attitudes, the values, the beliefs. And because of that, stereotypes are often true. You know, if older workers are, are faced with younger workers and there's conflict that's there, they may simply say that the younger people are, are lazy and don't respect authority. And when we step back and we think about that in some industries, a median age of a worker could be, uh, let's say, 54, 55 years old. And some workers, uh, sometimes up to a quarter of the staff, could be 65 years or older now. You see people working into their 70s and 80s in some instances. So when we think about the generational divide and people just ghosting, doing the good old Irish goodbye on the job because they might not like the conflict that's being presented from the person who could be their great grandparent who has a completely different mindset. It's intriguing to think about that moving the needle from A to B. It's, it, and, and how do you change the culture when maybe the people that are within your core circle of executives kind of meet the criteria of that older median that are set yeah. in their ways? You know, it takes a yeah, lot. How would you do it, Michelle? Well, it can be really dangerous if you don't or don't recognize it because um, the millennials are larger than the baby boomers. It is a huge generation. And as of 2020, made up 50% of the workforce population. So even if 
you know, so that's why diversity is really important. And um, I think, you know, it really needs to be discussed that not only diversity and inclusion with ethnicity and religion and most of the things that people are really obvious about, age often kind of falls off the radar for that. But like right. you mentioned, it's really important. And, the, you know, the the values of the people, their motivations are all going to be different across the generation. So, yeah, if you have a leadership team that is all older, especially without diversity or representation, they're going to really be out of touch with a very large part in depending on the industry and where they are but you know the tech industries are make up a larger portion of millennials than let's say you know the manufacturing industry and so some of those are going to really be out of touch as they they have to be able to um you know get in touch with the people that are in that generation usually uh, through for me personally i would recommend surveys um and you know really kind of reaching out uh, if they're de if they're able to have uh, stay interviews is usually what we do and really get into the core of and even obviously exit interviews if people are leaving and try to have one-on-ones and, and larger lengthy discussions on really get good feedback to help the organization understand what's going on. Why are people staying? Why are people leaving? And what makes it a good organization? Why would someone work there? Because then you can also you know use that for recruiting because then if you can identify what's why should someone work there you can pitch that and explain that to people that you're trying to recruit for the organization but also right. help people stay over term over long term too and if that stay interview focuses on that that core group that's been there a long time and say that core group is over 40 years old well we have to we have to do it with kid gloves right we we have constraints could it be misconstrued that we're putting a survey out only to the elderly and we're discriminating all right, so before you answer that, <laughs> let me let me let us let us wrap up this session here because we have two more series in this uh, two more sessions in this series, and I do want to talk about being human and being humane, and I think that really leads right into the question you just asked, JC. So we'll be right back, folks. Thank you for joining the HR Empowerment Podcast, brought to you by Aurora Training Advantage. We hope you've gained new insight and strategies to navigate the HR profession. We look forward to you joining us again on the HR Empowerment Podcast.